So I'm talking about how to survive as a single UX designer and still create great products. My talk is basically mainly tips today, um, but maybe I say a few words to myself. So um, I work full time as a senior UX designer at uh, Rackspace um, Technology, which is rather a IT based company and um, my main focus at the moment is mainly on Microsoft 365 and Power Platform. So I mostly work with internal customers on um, yeah, improving processes, which is really interesting um, because yeah, <laughs> often UX is really bad there, <laughs> uh, which is why I like this field. Um, but I'm also a YouTube creator um, for three years now. Um, and I have a channel about UX topics. Um, and I also have a small channel about baking because this is my hobby. <laughs> and also my hobby is volley dancing. So um, yeah, I um, love to be creative, but I also love technology. And this is also how I came into the field. And um, my topic or the topic about my talk is that I want to talk about single UX designers, but I have a confession to make. I actually work with another UX designer at the moment. <laughs> so I have one UX colleague in my team, um, but we are the only ones basically in the whole company. So nobody really knows what we're doing. Um, but um, <laughs> yeah, um, that, that's just the current situation. And we are also in a um, consultant business. So often we are hired to, um, yeah, to, to engagements as um, single persons. So I do know the situation of working alone and what the struggles um, are basically. So, yeah, um, but before we start off um, in my talk, I want to do a little research kind of um, and want to ask you to um, open your browser and type in menti.com and um, enter the code. I can also paste this in the chat if I can open the chat. There it is. So you can directly open up the link. Um, and then I ask you to vote. How large is your UX team? So I get a small impression. And then the numbers are popping in. I don't know how many people we are. Mm, 40. Okay. Then I will wait a little bit. Okay. We have a lot of single single UX designers over here, which is great because that is what my to uh, topic today is about. <laughs> mm, okay, uh, there's still coming some people in. Uh, okay, to not um, push on that so far, um, let's move on to the next question. And um, that is, um, what do you think is the greatest challenge for a single UX designer? Missing feedback in exchange, so exchange with other um, UX designers, testing own designs, um, important tasks are being skipped or too much work for one? Hmm. Okay, <laughs> so we had 25 on the last one and we're there. Okay, so the winner is missing feedback and exchange and then too much work for one. Interesting. I have tips for all of the four, <laughs> as you might have hoped. <laughs> so um, let's go back to that. Um, uh, let me change that again. Okay. Um, so these are also the four um, obviously challenges that I um, uh, yeah figured. And um, so missing feedback and exchange due to sparing's partner, as I already said. Um, testing your own designs is a problem because um, 
as you probably know, um, when you are too involved um, uh, in to the design, then you are um, biased and might ask um, questions that so that you hear the answer you want to hear. So you're not really objective. Um, so this is an issue. Um, or you have no one else with the skill set for testing or interviewing. Um, or, and this is kind of um, correlating to that. Um, so you uh, important tasks are being skipped, which means you don't test at all because there is no one that can test or you don't want to test your own designs. Um, maybe you don't have enough time or um, you, you are not um, so skilled in whatever you want to do. And this is also <laughs> going hand in hand. You have too much to work just for one. So you try to do everything very on a high level and you skip important tasks. So this goes all hand in hand. And this is why I offer you different tips for all these kind of things. Oh, I made the slide on the wrong thing. So yeah, um, tips to conquer these challenges. Um, for missing feedback and exchange. Um, I have the tip, um, you can also get feedback from non-UX people. So um, for me, always developers were a very great source for, um, for getting feedback. Um, because obviously, I mean, you should ask them anyway, even if you have other <laughs> UX people there, um, because you need to have, fulfill technical requirements as well. Um, but they also use products and they have their opinion on, on how to use it. You can do a little bit of guerrilla testing um, with them. And of course, also with the customer, referring a little bit um, to uh, Neil's talk of course, with customers, there's always stakeholder opinions. So they all have their own agenda. So always be aware when you um, talk with other people um, that, um, yeah, they're all biased and they all have their own, own requirements and um, you have to filter these. But the, um, yeah, the more you talk with people, the more you see also um, what are their um what are their agenda <laughs> and um, so then um, uh, you also get the feedback you might want to get and also of course talk with users you know? I mean obviously but um, you not necessarily need other UX designers to get feedback on your designs just do smaller tests um, and um, and then you can also get the feedback you might want and um, what I think is also a great opportunity exchange with the UX community. So um, like we're doing here, join, uh, go to a meetup or um, there are a lot of um, groups. For example, the German UPA is there, which has these um, little groups where you work together. They have a mentor program um, where you can get your regular mentor or like something like an exchange buddy um, if you participate in the inside the UX community, you can find these kind of um, exchange partners outside of your own company. So I also know that there is a Slack group for designers here in Hamburg, for example. So there are a lot of people, as you saw also here in this talk, there are 10 people who also work as single UX designers. Everybody has the same issue. And um, so when we team up, <laughs> we, are, um, we, are, we are more than just single persons. Going to um, testing your own designs. Um, I have the tip to build your own infrastructure. So um, use the tools you have on hand. So for me, for example, I use a lot of the Microsoft 365 tools and um, um, with, with Teams and Microsoft Bookings, I can create um, usability tests really, really fast because um, I made a YouTube video also on that, for example, how to set up um, a bookings um, for your usability tests. Um, actually, I did this for this call, so you have it directly um, because it's not so intuitive, but um, it makes it really easy for you because you have just a, um, uh, you have a page where the people um, you want to invite to your usability test can just book the times um, that suits them best. 
and um, you don't have to call them and um, waste a lot of time on, on recruiting. I mean, it, you need a panel for that. You need to have the people that you want to test with. Um, so uh, when uh, for me, um, I'm testing in the B2B area and I always do this over the customer. So I ask the customer, well, I want to do a usability test to get some feedback. Do you have people? And then he says, yeah, I have one or three guys in mind. And then I just send out the bookings invitation and they book the appointments on their own. And it's really working great for me in the last years um, or the other possibility is of course to just buy in there are a lot of recruiting agencies that do this completely full service for you um, it's just a matter of building up that infrastructure once so you have this a lot of work one time and then you can use it on a regular basis and are way faster if you want to reuse it again and um, also using templates is reducing your amount of work and giving you speed on that part to, for example, especially um, usability test um, guidelines or um, like the, um, yeah, I have this uh, as a template, I just pop it out and there's the, um, the stuff you ask before you start the interview, like, Oh, the, I'm, I'm not asking for your skills, but we're just testing the um, the product and um, stuff like that. You know, you, it's something you say every time, but it's always good to have. And that's great to have as a template. Um, and same goes with the protocol. So if you testing on your own, so you don't have a um, extra um, observer, use the protocol. Uh, protocol file directly as your um, interview guide so you can have this both at the same time to look at the questions and protocol at the same time and give yourself enough breaks to do it and really 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 important when you test your own designs is stick to the rules so you know the rules um, and um, write down the question beforehand. Um, so you ask your questions neutral and open. That is the key thing. And um, let some people review maybe if you have the feeling that you might um, ask the wrong questions. And um, that is also um, a great tip. Um, don't argue or defend in the testing. So never just say, okay, yeah, I, I take this with me and um, then just take the feedback and leave it as it is. And because if you start defending, then the test person thinks, ah, oh, I said something wrong. And then they don't show their real um, opinion. And um, yeah, that's just all very bad. Um, I also did a whole video um, on that. Um, I have this in the Miro board um, under the links so if you want to watch this all in German it's there <laughs> and um, for uh, too much work for one I have the uh, tip to prioritize your work and work efficiently so um, it's it's really good if you um, think about the task at hand how severe are the problems and how much work does this mean for me if you categorize them in something like this uh, matrix here and you have really severe problem with not much effort to do of course you have to solve it at first <laughs> and um, and then do the other tasks so um, there is only so much time work that can be done by one person and um, that has to be communicated um, also within the company um you the solution is never to work more for you <laughs> um because that is just burning yourself out and the company gets used to you just working more and um so prioritize prioritize and um also communicate this very clearly and just try to work as efficient as possible but don't skip on the important task and um, so if you use um, templates to work faster that's always helpful improve your skills but like I said um, you can't do magic you're still just one person um, and um, 
finding allies is also a great a great possibility to um, yeah solve your problems um, let customers recruit I already said that um, or hire a agency to to work for you um, let also maybe um, it depends uh, customers or the team document usability test that can be a very dangerous thing to do <laughs> because if they're um, if they're also not writing down the feedback neutrally um, it can affect your findings um, but it's also great to get for them a higher understanding what usability or UX is really about. So that can be helpful, but it's also something you have to take care and maybe is giving you more work in the end. Um, and But what I also have a great, uh, great um, experience with is doing designs together with developers. So doing um, design studios that um, you teach them how to do wireframes and then you do a little workshop and um, you have this um, creative phase together, um, which is also then including the technical requirements directly in the design process. So the same principles that go for a single UX designer goes also for team UX people. Um, it's always great to, to work together as a team. And um, <laughs> because I already said, try to communicate if you really have too much to work and try to hire. <laughs> I mean, it's hard and uh, hard said, but um, uh, if you want to grow and um, Niels also said that if the um, importance of UX and um, the value of UX is really considered within the company, then they should also think about upgrading their UX skills. And um, for the last topic, um, so the important tasks are being skipped. Um, that can that can have two reasons. So um, either we have a time issue, or we have a UX UX value issue. So um, do we just don't have enough time to do this, or um, is are the tasks skipped because someone thinks they're not important enough? To do them and um, in terms of um, time uh, this is very similar to um, too much work for one um, so I mean you always have to find the balance between tech business and the user this also very much going to Neil's topic uh, talk <laughs> um, so uh, you always have to have a good balance um, that you fulfill the different requirements. And um, you can argue with this quite well, I think. So um, if you are, don't create products that are not usable and are just, well, greatly technology wise and, um, and yeah, just make a lot of money, um, then... Um, uh, then they're maybe not usable or not wanted. And um, with that, you can always argue because it's the same as if you um, build a product that is totally usable, great technology, but doesn't sell, then you don't make money and your business is going to die because you're not making money or if you have a totally bugged software. And um so all these three um, topics are important and worth your time. And um, so it is very good to get a clear commitment when things should be done, because I often heard, yeah, we do it later <laughs> or we, we move it into the next sprint or whatever. Um, and then it's never done. And um, it's Similar when, when you um, are working with, with um, the other things, like um, for bugs, you plan them in um, in your sprints. Do this with the usability tasks as well. And so get a clear commitment when the tasks are being done so they're really done. And thinking about the UX value, um, so this is an organizational problem. 
because the organization doesn't value UX enough. And um, that means you have to get your leadership involved because this means change. Change always requires leadership buy-in and um, support for them because lastly, you have to invest also to, to increase the, um, the value by, by hiring, by doing the tasks. Um, and um, yeah, it's, it's just you, it, it's taking some time, this, this change, and it's not done tomorrow. Um, but um, as a, um, yeah, as a tip from my side is when you speak to the leadership, try to speak their language similar when talking with users. Um, and um, uh, when you are in usability test and you just adapt to their language, you also have to adapt to the language of the leadership. Often this is KPIs, um, but it's not necessarily. And um, this helps you get over your message to them and um, yeah by that hopefully yeah make them understand why your ex is important one would be to to show them also this um, triangle of the um, tech business user and um, yeah the other ones is um, showing maybe what I also have great um, results with that um, show them real user. Um, so when you have usability tests, have some video snippets and show these, these are very, very powerful because um, you, you create more empathy for the user. Yeah, um, that were my tips. And um, I can also already see that there's a question, would you stop UX designers um, or UX designers who is applying to a company where there is, for example, 15 developers and um, zero or one designer? Um, no, I would not stop them. Um, because I think there's a lot of people who would want that. So for example, for me, as I start, stated in the beginning, um, there are also not a lot of UX designers in my company. And I knew that before I applied there and I, I wanted that. Um, I wanted to, to make that change and um, to, to get this into the company. And um, I think it's a decision and... Um, if you want to, if you want to to start in that change, and um, push this this topic forward, um, then this uh, can be really satisfying. It's just something you you have to know that it's different.